All right, hey everybody, uh, my service with you. Uh, been a while. Um, really, just gonna go over a couple of things here. Um, kind of a call out on MPS today um, to kind of explain a couple of things that um, I've been doing on a regular basis, and uh, Twisted picked up on them, and everybody was kind of wondering um, how uh, to do uh, a couple of things, and I guess it came out that there were two things I needed to explain. So, um, the picture up on the screen in front of you um, is the avatar of Twisted's in question, and I guess the first question was uh, pretty much how to um, get the model looking like that. And then the uh, second was about integrating it with, uh, with the background. So um, Marie actually chimed in and wanted to see the kind of uh, the workflow from beginning to end on this. So I uh, figured that's what we do here for the next few minutes. Um, really, the, there's a couple of douchebag tricks, and then a lot of it is highly situational. Um, the the methods that we're going to be talking about uh, the things to do the model pretty easy uh, and you'll see this straight off it's it's pretty easy there's a couple of different things to do and then when it comes to integrating uh, the background it gets really situational so we'll take a look at it um, the first thing that we're going to do here is we're just going to uh, grab an image and I've uh, picked a, a nice little picture here those of you guys who watch Game of Thrones will recognize that picture. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and paste that in. And uh, as usual, let's go ahead and put that on a black background layer. Okay. So here's our picture. Now, the first thing I want to do with this is kind of block it out of the background. I, I don't go out and erase things anymore. Um, and you're going to see why here in a couple of seconds. What I've actually been doing is pushing pixels around a lot uh, with a push brush. Now, before I go on, I'm going to be using this push brush like constantly through this tutorial. Um, and those of you guys who are Photoshop users um, are going to want to go ahead and use what's called the smudge tool um, and that smudge tool does exactly the same thing as we're going to be doing here so I've got my uh, I've got my picture and I've got my smudge tool and why I'm taking this first step first before I start enhancing the photograph you'll you'll understand pretty quickly so the smudge tool what does it do it just smudges things um, for lack of a better word. So as you see as I'm pushing the pixels around like that, it's just smudging those pixels forward. Now I have an opacity slider on it, okay? And the less opaque, the, the less that's going to push, okay? The less that's going to smudge. If I set my opacity higher, obviously it's going to smudge a lot more. Now the reason why I'm doing this is going to become pretty evident in a few minutes. And really, uh, part of the benefits of using this technique that I'm showing you, and I've showed it in one of my other videos, is it really dramatically cuts down on your need to uh, go doing things like uh, masking or pulling models out of the background or what, whatever you may be uh, accustomed to doing, whatever is your weapon of choice. Um, me personally, I like pulling things out of the background because of the exactness of it, but as you're going to see with the technique that we're using here today, um, it actually gives us a more organic feel if we start using the smudge brush instead. Because if you take a look, there's, there's a subtle gradation here, you know, there's different tones coming in here. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull that, push that around over to the other side just to uh, kind of even it out here, and you'll see this in a minute. Now, we don't want to get as close as possible without going crazy, and oops, that last one was a little much. Um, without going crazy and spending two hours of you guys watching me clicking here. So, we'll just get it up as close as possible, and then we'll just move that out, okay? And really, again, all we're doing is just kind of pushing things back and forth and until we get to the point where we're kind of happy with that. I'm just going to smudge that edge there. So as you can see, we can get a pretty clean edge with that. Um, if I was to be doing this for real, and I, I, I may kind of finish it later, um, I would absolutely be going in and uh, getting these, these hard edges uh, a lot better. Um, but 
I just want to kind of demo this for the sake of argument, so I'm going to be doing a bit of a bit of a quick job on that. So you'll see here. And really, the the reason why I'm doing this part here is to give it a background for one, and to kind of block out the size if I'm actually making it into an avatar or something. Obviously, I'm going to want to. I'm going to want some extra space over on the sides here. Um, again, with the smudge tool, um, or the push brush, or whatever weapon you're using here, um, you can get in as close as you like with uh, smaller brushes here. So, as you can see there, that's starting to get in. And, uh, we don't get too exact about that part, especially because it likely won't go out. Now when I get to these edges, uh, these parts here where my brush strokes start to show, I'm just going to lower the opacity and just kind of push around a little bit back and forth and just kind of squeeze it out. Kind of gets those, those parts that aren't working quite well. We'll just come in here on this side again with a fairly large brush. And this won't take much longer. Terribly exacting, as you can see. But you're going to want to take your time on that, get it right. You know, the difference between a good av and a great av is the willingness to get in there on those edges and push them around and take that pride in what you're doing without getting up on my soapbox yet again. Okay, and almost done. And again, all we've actually done here is just push some, some gray around. Okay? Pretty simple. Just going to uh, get these last little bits here. Okay? So, the first thing that we're going to take a look at is how to process this image so that, um, so that we're getting that effect. If we go back and look at Twisted, there's a, there's a subtle glow to it. And getting that effect is actually fairly easy. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take my picture and I'm going to duplicate this. Okay, I'm going to duplicate the the layer that the model is on, and I'm actually going to grayscale it at this point. So the easiest way to grayscale a single layer is just to colorize it with a saturation value of zero. Okay, then I'm going to duplicate it again. So now I've got two black and white layers and my original layer. And if I kill the black and white layers, I can see my original layer. The next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab the topmost layer. I'm going to hide the, uh, the one in the middle here for the moment. And I'm going to adjust the brightness and contrast of it. Okay. Now, what, let me explain what we're doing before I, before I give you the, uh, before I give you the, the eye candy here. What we're going to do here is we're going to make our own lights and our own shadows, and we're going to get the control over it. Um, you could absolutely find a filter to do exactly what I'm doing here. Um, I'm not against filters per se. Um, I am, however, a, a little bit against the loss of control that they represent. So I, I tend to go with these ways of doing it myself just because, um, well, you'll see here in a moment. It'll all become clear. What I've done here is I've set us for a brightness of 34 and a contrast of 51. You want to be pretty aggressive on your contrast. Never let your brightness go above your contrast. Okay, So you're going to want to go ahead and just create some highlights on her. And if you see there, uh, when we come into the actual picture itself, there's a, pretty, uh, a brand new highlight in there. And the easiest way to look at it is we can unclick that. There's our original image. There's that. The next thing that we're going to do with this is we're going to actually blur this, Gaussian blur this pretty aggressively. And I've got this Gaussian blur, I'm going to set it for about 12 pixels. And all that's doing here is creating my, my highlights. Now the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take this layer and instead of setting it for normal, I'm going to set it for soft light. And what we do here is we start to build up this kind of feeling that the, uh, the, uh, that her skin is kind of giving off that soft glow, and if we take a look at that, we see exactly what we're talking about. Okay? And if we step back, take another look at it here with the soft light on and off, it's just a simple effect. Okay? Now the next thing that we're going to do here, let's hide that layer for the moment. 
is we're going to create a shadow layer. So let's go back to our second black and white layer and adjust the brightness and contrast. And what we want to do here is kind of keep our contrast value at around maybe in the in the low 30s and put our our uh, brightness down to about well, minus 16 works on this picture. And again, it, it's the just the opposite of what we were doing before in that we're just creating a uh, creating a, a a shadow layer. Okay. We'll hit OK on that, and just like before, we're going to go in and we're going to Gaussian blur this with the same kind of values as before. So Gaussian blur, okay, with a radius of 12 on this image. It's going to depend on your image. And with this layer, I'm actually going to set it as a burn layer. Now, the problem is that a burn layer at 100% opacity just uh, makes everything black. We want to take this down to probably about 18. Okay. Now, again, well, let's take a look at the difference between the two. There's our original one. There's our new layer, and let's let our let's add our uh, our highlights on top of that. And that's kind of what we're getting at. It's a, it's a more dramatic version of exactly what we were talking about before. Okay. I might go ahead here and just take that burn layer down quite a little bit more. Okay. But that's just a personal preference. And again, the reason why I do this, you can see it now, is we've got a, uh, a highlight layer, which I can go ahead and uh, change, or I can duplicate that and make it even more dramatic. I can grab my shadow layer, up the value of this, and I can go in here and start tweaking this as much as I want, back and forth. Okay? So that's really the way um, that I do it. Basically, I'm taking my image with my model on it. I am making two copies, two grayscale copies. Um, one I'm adjusting with a heavy contrast and a little brighter, and one with a heavy contrast and a little darkness. And then I'm uh, just applying those as a burn layer, or I can go ahead and apply that as a hard light layer, and the same kind of effect comes in. And those light layers are giving me exactly what I want there. Okay starts to make sense. And really it's a it's a it's a it's a small trick, but it really kind of gets you a, a pretty immediate impact. Okay? So Play around with the values. If, you, if you're playing around with it yourself, the things that you want to take a look at are, are mainly um, adjusting the, uh, the, the Gaussian blurs radius. Um, anything above 6 or 7 is probably a good idea. I went with 12 on here just because I'm feeling frisky. Alright. So that's step one, is how to take that image and kind of turn it into something a little more. The next thing that we we're talking about is integrating with the background, um, and uh, oh, let's kill that, and uh, let's pull up these pictures here. Now this picture, obviously, if you are uh, acquainted with the character that I was working with here, uh, fits thematically, and that's uh, pretty important. Okay, And I'm just actually going to go ahead and on top of all these three layers, paste that. Now that's entirely too large for this image, but we're going to leave it here for a second. And what we're going to do is with this, uh, with what would be the background, we're actually going to keep it on the foreground and set it for maybe uh, let's set it for there we go, soft light. Okay, and we start to see how these images start to come together if I set it for soft light. Now, what we get into here is the problem uh, of this, all right? And the problem is, if we take a look, it's where the dragging here is going over her, okay? So we're going to actually go back to our push brush here, or our smudge tool, and I'm going to actually set this for about 55 pixels, and an opacity probably about 45. And if I start smudging it, you start to see exactly what I was looking for here, okay? Is we're getting rid of the dragon without getting rid of the tones that he brings to the picture. And we're finding that way of integrating these two images. Now, given what I just showed you, that's one thing. But let's get back to the point where the dragon is still pretty much here. And there are different points where we can start smudging from. See, I actually started on this side of her face, on the uh, left side of her face, and brought it forward. Okay. 
but we could go from the other side of her face and bring it that way. Now that's a different tone that's over it. Obviously brings a different tone to her face, etc. And that doesn't quite work. So what's important is you explore around and you find that one that one tone value that say over her and, and remember we're smudging the layer with the dragon on it, right? We're not smudging her. We're just bringing her out by changing the tone. Now if we go ahead and just set this layer, we take it off soft light and set it for normal. See what's happening here is all I'm doing is kind of spreading this orange around. Okay? Put it back on soft light. And you see what we're getting at. Okay. Now takes a while, absolutely. But as you come in here and you start to see what's happening, you start to understand that it, it actually starts to integrate her with this background very well. And really, probably better than we could do with almost any other method in terms of putting our, our model into the background. Okay. Let's go back down here and really just start to spread that around. And again, like I said before, all we're doing is spreading that color back and forth. That's over her on the soft light layer. So you can pull that from a variety of different places. Now, the last thing that I'm going to do here is just a really small trick, but you're going to probably agree that it uh, brings a, a little bit to the party. We're going to grab our, um, our layer here that represents the... Uh, that represents the uh, highlights, we're actually going to put that over the dragon. And what that does is pop her out just a little bit better. Let me start to clean that out there. Now, the thing about this method is we have the ability to really kind of push these things around ourselves. Okay. And there you have it. Mother of dragons. Might go in here on this background layer and just adjust sharpness of it. And there we go. So, takes a little bit of work. I might go ahead and take that dragon layer and just adjust the uh, hue and saturation. And I might make that dragon layer kind of just down a little bit so it doesn't take over, actually. I could even fade that a little bit. Then I start to see the problems with it and go into her cheek. Set this a, a little bit smaller. And just be careful with your edges, but again, we don't have to get right down to the pixel with this method. Okay. So there you have it. Alright. Um, the other thing I might do with this image here is I might grab my clone brush. You see how there's that hair there from uh, the other picture? So I might just grab a big old clone brush here. Just start to take that out. But I'll probably take some work on that until I got it just the way I wanted it. And there we have it. This other dragon wing over her hair. And again, I'll just go back to my push brush. Just push it out. And I'll spend a couple of hours on something like that. There you go. Bringing the two things together. Um, exactly the same way that Twisted did it here. Different subject matter, obviously. Bring my hard light up layer up a little bit. There's a whole new image. That's it. I hope that helps.